uh, the hearing of the Foreign Affairs Subcommittee on Oversight will come to order. Today's hearing is on the Office of the Inspector General for the Department of State. Uh, as our sole witness today, it's uh, our pleasure to have uh, the Distinguished Comptroller General of the United States, uh, Mr. Walker, Mr. David Walker. Uh, Woodrow Wilson wrote in 1885 that quite as important as legislation is vigilant oversight of administration. Those are Woodrow Wilson's words. We can all agree that effective oversight is critical to improve the efficiency, economy, and effectiveness of governmental operations, evaluate programs and performance. Secondly, to detect and prevent poor administration, waste, abuse, arbitrary and capricious behavior, or illegal and unconstitutional conduct, and probably as important to inform the general public and ensure that executive policies reflect the public interest. <clears throat> the Office of the Inspector General at State is re responsible for, pro pro for providing both the Secretary of State and the Congress with unbiased, reliable, accurate, and comprehensive information. But in March of this year, the GAO, the Government Accountability Office, reported numerous concerns about the independence of the Office of the State Inspector General. And with its inspection and investigative practices, what I found most disturbing was that these problems are not new. In fact, the GAO was reporting on them back in 1979. Yet apparently, little has changed over three decades. I'm sure everyone here is aware of allegations made by current and former state IG employees against the current Inspector General at the Department of the State, uh, Mr. Howard Krongard. These whistleblowers accused Mr. Krongard of politicizing his office by allegedly blocking investigations or glossing over problems, especially with respect to Iraq and Afghanistan that could potentially embarrass the administration. We take these accusations very seriously. If they are true, they represent a serious abuse of office and particularly significant breakdown in the Inspector General system. But those allegations are not the specific focus of our hearing today. This hearing will instead look at the existing infrastructure, practices, and policies of the Inspector General's office. It will examine the inherent weaknesses of the office as it currently functions. Through our witness, we will explore how they significantly weaken the integrity and credibility of the State Inspector General's office. And we will call upon the Comptroller General to identify opportunities for improving the independence and the quality of the work performed by the State Inspector General. What happened with the oversight of the construction of the U.S. Embassy in Iraq is a particularly instructive example of some of the problems facing the Office of the State Inspector General. In a recent hearing before another committee, Mr. Krongard testified regarding the work he had personally done on the U.S. Embassy in Iraq. 
There have been numerous allegations regarding the Kuwaiti company contracted to build the embassy. Charges of forced labor, physical abuse, trafficking in persons, the withholding of workers' passports, intolerable living conditions, and malnourished workers. Despite the, the gravity of these allegations, Mr. Krongard did not conduct an audit, which is a specific kind of review with particular criteria enumerated in statute. With standards that are established by law. Instead, he carried out what is known as an inspection, a much more loosely defined procedure that is only as thorough as the lead inspector decides it will be. There is enormous discretion when it comes to an inspection. Mr. Krongard's inspection concluded that he did not find evidence to support the allegations. However, he explained in that particular hearing that he only interviewed about six workers of the hundreds who worked there, took notes on the back of things, scraps of paper, because he didn't want the people that he interviewed to be uncomfortable and what I find particularly mind-boggling is that he allowed First Kuwaiti, the contractor under, under review, to select the employees for him to interview. As a former district attorney, I can only compare that to allowing a criminal defendant to select the witnesses for the prosecution. With the seriousness of such allegations, one would easily argue that a much more substantial and robust approach for conducting oversight of this specific issue was needed. In other words, a full-fledged exhaustive audit. But unfortunately, Mr. Krongard's inspection seems to capture two of the most significant deficiencies in the functioning or within the infrastructure of the Department of State Inspector General Division. First, it relies too much on inspections as opposed to audits, and that's an important distinction to make. And second, these inspections are often led by career or retired foreign service officers or by political appointees like Mr. Krongard, which obviously raises concerns about objectivity and the appearance of conflict of interest. Now, I'm sure many of these individuals are people of great integrity uh, and substantial experience, but they ought not to be the lead inspector because the American people demand more. Despite the concerns expressed about Mr. Krongard, the responsibility for these structural issues falls to Congress to address. It's our responsibility. If he were to leave his post tomorrow, these issues would still be there. As I mentioned previously, they have been identified as a concern for over 30 years, yet successive administrations and Congresses of both parties, Republican and Democrat, have been unable or unwilling to fix them. To clearly understand these issues and to identify solutions, as I indicated earlier, we have before us the Comptroller General of the United States, David Walker, to testify on his findings. Uh, but before formally introducing Mr. Walker, 
let me turn to my good friend and ranking member, Dana Rohrbacher, for his opening remarks.